good morning everybody uh, the first thing that uh, people always say when a vendor gets on stage in an event like this is the fear mongers are here right so it's not true right we we actually had uh, an interesting conversation with a cto of a bank in mumbai a couple of weeks ago and as soon as we entered the room that was the first thing they said the fear mongers are here but the fact is it's it is not yet all doomed day but the fact is we're getting there if we don't really spruce up our security needs miss uh, uh, rama ma uh, ma'am made a very very pertinent point everybody is looking at a return on investment or a total cost of ownership for everything that they invest on which brings me to the point is security really a necessity or an option right this is something we really have to look at as individuals going back into our corporations and take a decision whether we want to secure ourselves or we want to just run the show as things are going i have a lot of colorful slides uh pink for instance is what you see in the checkpoint logo all the time uh, that's also because uh, an interesting conversation from uh, a colleague of mine in marketing he said we want our customers infrastructure to be in the pink of health all the time so we'll go with pink so we actually live in an am am amazing world right do you all agree we want to get into the um, into a, an event in the morning and then it rains right you never know what to expect every day <laughs> the life expenditure expectancy of people across the world is increasing right uh, you have poverty reducing you have um, you know literacy rates increasing all around why is this all happening it's all because technology is growing exponentially all the time right so i'll give you an example how many of you know what's on the right the box that's being loaded onto the plane on the right how many of you know what it is checkpoint guys should not answer so that's actually the computer that was used to send neil armstrong and buzz aldrin to the moon 50 60 years ago and today the phone we have in our pockets are about 20 times 30 times more powerful than what it is then all in a span of 50 to 60 years so which shows the amount of speed with which technology is growing what is also happening is that we are moving away from connecting to the internet via you know you know people who are as old as me or young as me would have gone through the the dial up networking option to connect to the internet many many years ago right so we just have to pick up our phone now and then we are online immediately 66% of the world according to a study is connected to the internet at all times which means that the amount of data that is generated is massive right which also means that the amount of risk that is there when you are online is also equally massive and this is what we from a vendor point of view we would like to uh, uh, you know tell you what would be the ideal way to protect yourself this is a, like a best practice from what we want to do of course uh, like i said when a vendor talks everybody says they're going to go and talk about their products i don't want to do that uh, of course we want your money as a corporate but then as an individual nothing would hurt us more then a state sponsored attack on our country and we certainly want to keep this going from an educational point of view to also ensure that people at least take something away from this session and we take something away during the interactions with all of you how many of you know what this is i like this picture this is not from me this is from a colleague of mine so he told me this represents uh, you know all the physical objects that are connected to the network and are sending and receiving data from the internet from some parts of the us now whether it's true or false i don't know but i really like this picture so i thought i'll bring this in just to tell you that the amount of data that is being exchanged through iot specific uh, networks through ot specific networks are humongous right so it's not just about your network security your endpoints infrastructure is growing at a rapid pace one more example i really like data so one more example in 2013 if you need to build an app it took almost a year to build an app today you can churn out an app every 6 hours that's how much technology is really evolved right 6 hours you can build an app you have the tools you have the dev kits that are available to build it online in 6 hours and then roll it out but then the problem again here is everything is going so fast are we focusing on security as much as we really have to some quotes from some random places that i got uh, people are saying that the biggest um, 
barrier to IoT adoption is security. Cloud adoption, security. Autonomous cars, cyber security. Right? So people have shown that autonomous cars can be hacked and can be controlled from somewhere outside the car itself. So like I said, I don't want to be a fear monger. Right? I don't want to predict doomsdays here. But the fact is, if we don't look up security as a key part of our strategy, we'll end up going there some way or the other. It could not happen tomorrow. It could happen, let's say, 10 years from now. Why did I say the infrastructure is changing? OK, the graphics are not showing up here. We are no longer focusing just on network security, right? People are moving their data centers to the cloud. How many of us are really looking at mobile as a threat vector? Right? Later in the day, my good friend Pranay will show you how we can hack a mobile device. We are more than happy to take one of your phones. We don't want to do that. But then read your SMS messages, take pictures, take recordings of conversations that are happening without you even knowing anything. Right? So mobile as a threat vector is emerging really quickly. And what are we still doing? We are still looking at the CIA model, which means that as organizations, we are saying, I'll ensure that unauthorized access to my data is prevented, right? So confidentiality, I'll ensure. That's all I want to do. I'll ensure that my data is integral, which means that if my data is in rest, which means it's in my organization, or if it's moving between systems, I'll just ensure the security of the data is available. And I'll also ensure that my systems and data is available all the time. Is this the right method to follow when we are putting up a security framework in the company? Uh, I would say to an extent, yes, but then going forward, I'll also tell you why it's important to look at a cyber resilience uh, engineering framework, uh, which would also be a part of your strategy for security. What do we do traditionally when we want to buy software? We say, I, wa I have a problem of virus in my uh, industry. Uh, I'll buy an antivirus. You know, I want to ensure that malicious websites are not accessed by my users. I'll do a URL filtering, right? I have a botnet, I'll put an antibot solution. I'll do an application control if I have high risk applications. Right? So this is how we are typically looking at security. But is this enough? I'll give you an example. If somebody wants to buy an anti-APT solution, what is the first thing that we do? The first thing we do is look at the different analysts, what the analysts say about an anti-APT solution. Gartner would have their own story, IDC would have their own story, Forrester would have their own story, right? And then we look at all the uh, uh, options that they provide us, and then we come to the solution that anti-APT means sandboxing, right? So we have already set ourselves a very, very narrow path, a very, very narrow point of view, which says, if I want anti-APT, I need a sandbox solution, right? But the fact is, it's not just that. You're looking at, of course, techniques, features, functions, performance. Those are things you would anyway evaluate when you, when you uh, want to buy a solution. But then what are you actually missing? Besides the POC you do with a zero-day malware, what you actually miss is the fact that what is the scope of your sandboxing, right? Is your sandboxing just for your network? Or is your sandboxing something that has to extend beyond your network to your endpoints, to your mobile, to your cloud? Right? And, and if you don't have a cloud strategy, would you have something in, in the coming years? Should you already keep that in mind when you want to do something uh, from a sandboxing point of view? What are the architecture and operations? Right? There are multiple such minute points that are missed out. What this does is eventually when you start off with your project with an objective and you actually execute it, there is a huge gap in what you set out to achieve and what you have actually achieved. One more example, right? So there's a, there's a big gap here. So I'll get to one more example. But before that, what has this happened? This has happened because you're not looking at the entire scope where you want to cover and where you want to protect. Some examples of attacks which did not happen directly via the network. Stuxnet, people consider it the World War I of cybersecurity. That's what the experts say. Happened through USB sticks. You all know the stories, right? Stuxnet, how it happened. So target. The target attack started through an air conditioner. Right? And, and then what we also see is that 91% of cyber attacks start with a phishing mail. The user will open an attachment they expect is from somebody they know. And then it's game over. Right? So that, that is what is really happening. 
So, where are we going? We are going to a stage where everything is connected. Of course, today everything is connected. Uh, the attacks are also increasing, right? The number of attacks are increasing. The example was the ransomware attack in Austria. How many of you have heard of the ransomware attack in Austria? Right? It just locked off people from their rooms. People could not use their keys to get into the room, and people who were inside the room could not get out of the room. Right? So it is scary. It's no longer just about your networks. It's also about people at some point in time. Right? Uh, mobile, right? Mobile as a device. 70% of all mobile attacks uh, that we find are targeted in our region, right? which means that the Asia-Pacific region is the biggest target for any mobile attacker. Most of us don't know it, right? So it's, the fact is, Gooligan was a big, big attack. How many of you know India was the biggest attacked country? The maximum number of mobile devices that were affected by the Gooligan was in India. What did this do? You download an app from the App Store, Play Store, official Play Store. It's infected. It steals your Google credentials. And we don't know what's happening. Right? There is no way in which, from our mobile phone, we find out what is happening or not. There is still a way if you want. You can go and put in, you can go to Google again, the checkpoint.com. See in your Gmail ID, it will tell you if it's hacked or not. Right? That, so there is an option to find out whether you were hacked or not. And then the NSA tools, right? Somebody just put it online, and then what happened after that, we all know. I read a news article yesterday, I don't know if it's true, that a seven-year-old boy can hack and you know ask for ransom. And they did a test somewhere in the UK. They used the anti-ransomware uh, ransomware tools downloaded from the dark net, told a seven-year-old boy trigger an attack, and he could actually do it, a seven-year-old boy. The typical time taken to detect a breach in an organization is mentioned here in each of these attacks. In Michael's, it took eight months. Home Depot, eight months, right? One year in Sony, one year in Starbucks. This is the typical time. So people are in your systems for that long they are willing to wait before they actually pull the data out or hack into your systems, stay there quietly as a bot, and then they pull the data out when they really believe it's the right time. So this is the time any organization has to really detect something. So it's been one year if somebody has not detected an attack, then there is a big challenge that we have, which means that we don't know what's happening in our systems. So is it effective, right? Is, is the security effective? Why is it not effective? It is also uh, brings me back to a point which Rama Ma'am had uh, put up on our slide. We are moving away from prevention, right? Prevention is good. Let us all accept that we will be attacked. It is not a question of if, it is a question of when. We have to think on those lines and we have to put together our strategy on those lines. So unless we start doing that, this is bound to happen. What we are saying is, we are already at that stage. We probably don't know what's happening around us, which is not our fault. But then we are already at a stage where attacks are happening without us knowing. It's not always that an attack happens with us knowing. There was an interesting malware, uh, a mobile malware called Judy. It was, you know, uh, nicknamed Judy, uh, an attack which happened two year, two months ago, about two months ago. This did not harm the end user in any way. So it was a mobile malware. All it did was, without the mobile user knowing it, it went into ad sites and did multiple clicks on those ad sites. Which means that they don't want to hurt you as a user, but they want to uh, use you as a proxy to ensure that they're making money by clicking ads. Right. So the ways in which people are making money through uh, uh, malware is actually uh, you know, crazy for us when we look at it from a research point of view internally. WannaCry, my seven-year-old knows what's WannaCry. That was the impact of WannaCry, uh, on our country at least, where cyber uh, as a topic was not really well known down to the masses. This made sure that every single person knew what WannaCry is. Interestingly, 
we have about 4,000 customers running on our anti-ransomware solution. And, and of course, not one of them had to cry because of WannaCry. So, but that's a diff uh, discussion for a different uh, time. But I just wanted to tell you that this was something which changed the game completely. So, what do we expect as an organization? What we see, what we have seen is that for sure it will continue to grow. Uh, I was in an interesting conversation uh, with a colleague of mine in Israel during the Cyber Week, right, which happened a couple of uh, months ago. People are talking about hacking the human, right? So, so hopefully we are not there yet, but then people are talking about you have an IPL hack you, you have a pacemaker which has an IPL hack you, right? That's the kind of uh, thoughts that people are having. Now, now while that could be too far-fetched as we stand here and discuss, there are discussions that are happening on this level as well. What we believe is advanced pervasive threats would continue as a lot of customers move to private, public, hybrid crowds, crowd attacks would continue and then mobile for sure. Mobile as an endpoint is something we all have to keep in mind as a very, very key vector of attack in your organization. More or less every organization has a BYOD policy in place, which means that people have their official data on their mobile device. So it is something, please do keep this in mind when you're putting together a cyber strategy. Are we taking the right approach? Probably not. Why do I say this? Uh, this is actually a model that was set up by a company called the Mitre Corporation in the US, the Cyber Security Resilience um, Engineering Framework. So what they're saying is, you have your point solutions today, right? So you have the conventional cyber security. You want to protect against attacks. You set up, uh, uh, you know, products, you install these products, implement these products in your organization for uh, traditional, uh, you know, uh, cyber security attacks. But the most important thing is an attack should not cripple your organization, which means that you need to have a business continuity plan in place, which also means that assume that you will be attacked, right? So they're saying, let's assume you're going to be attacked. What are you going to do next, right? It is the fight back that you have to do that is more important, right? One is what is the damage that you're going to limit to ensure that the attack is quarantined to one particular part of your organization where you can fight with it. Have an incident response team in place, uh, which is going to look at the incidents in detail and then try to fight back with these incidents. So this is actually a very, very key part of your cybersecurity strategy, right? The most important thing is your mission critical functions have to continue if you have a cyber attack. It cannot bring down your complete organization. Right? And that's the most important thing that this particular model proposes. Now, depending on the maturity of our organization, you would be in one of these uh, triangles currently, right? Depends on how mature your organization is, you would be in each of these triangles. But an ideal case is that the entire thing is one single triangle and you're there. So the entire area is grayed out. That, that's what we should tend to move towards as a model itself. But then, are we ready, right? So, so this is something we have to question ourselves. Are we ready? We, we questioned a few CEOs, uh, CIOs from uh, some companies when we did this research. How many companies are protected and not protected, right? So we are looking at the three main uh, areas where we believe attacks will grow this year as, as uh, you know, advanced pervasive threats would continue. Mobile security would be a big issue. Cloud security would continue to be a big issue. And if you look at the statistics that we have, it shows that 90 plus percent of the organizations are not ready. Of course, this is not specific to India. This is more of a global data that we have, but I'm pretty certain we'll fall somewhere around the same uh, average percentage as well. So are we really surprised we are vulnerable? These are certain explanations, right? So with security, it's always that it won't happen to me is one thing that we all strongly believe in. It's not going to happen to me. And I'll worry about it if it happens to me. It's not going to happen. It's like insurance, right? It's like insurance. Do I really need to buy insurance? The question is, you need it, right? You really need insurance because if something happens, what next, right? So I would relate a lot of cybersecurity to insurance. So 
we have we have a good saying that goes around in in our company um, it says that you guys choose whether you want a vaccine or you want an antibiotic right so so do you, do you believe a vaccine is better on anti antibiotic right so i i would say the same with respect to cyber security let's try to prevent as much as we can i know we can't prevent 100% but then let's also have plans in place to mitigate the risks that come up if there is a breach what is happening today is we have multiple point solutions security the first thing we do is we put up a firewall right which means that you protected one part of the intrusion now what happens here there are still the, uh, the, you know risks that are carried forward and then we say okay now firewall i have put a firewall there are still intrusions happening what am i missing i'm probably missing an ips system an intrusion prevention system let me put up an ips system in here there's still something else happening i say okay i'll put up an antivirus or an antibot right so we are going at a stage where we are not thinking through the entire security strategy we are taking bits and pieces of the security strategy itself <coughs> so too many disparate technologies uh, i can stand here uh, on behalf of checkpoint and tell you that uh, you know as much as we would like our systems to be integrated with all the other vendors or competitors out there we hate them they hate us right so which means that do you want to work on a common technology i don't think so right i would do what is best for me as an organization right somebody else should do what is best uh, for an organization so what happens if you want to integrate all these systems it is a huge challenge right and and then attacks are bound to happen and we are going to keep patching up our network we are going to be uh, keep patching up our endpoints as and when an attack happens which is not really the right way to do it so are we really looking at the right place when an attack happens right so we are looking uh, you know putting our focus to a specific area of the attack we are not broadening the horizon of the attack so we just identify the obvious threats now what happens okay i have a strategy for uh mobile i have a strategy for my network i have a strategy for my cloud so i have three four different uh, point products which are there and then each of them are looking at their own specific attacks right so a vendor who is a very famous vendor in the cloud would focus on the cloud and then try to pick out all the attacks that are coming into the cloud but what happens to my network okay i have another vendor uh, who is going to look at my network attacks and who is going to tell me what is right and what is wrong in my network how to set up my network but then there is a gap between each of these which means that is this the way to do it or do you just broaden the beam what this means is have a consolidated approach right which means that if i identify a zero day threat in my network that should no longer be a zero day threat in my mobile world or that should no longer be a zero day threat in my cloud world if a customer in india is hit by a zero day application a minute later that should no longer be a zero day in any part of the world right that is the most important thing that we'll have to keep in mind and that is exactly what we are working from an r&d point of view from our company uh, as in in our company as well so our focus is now shifting towards cloud mobile and threat as three major vectors of attacks networks of course that's always there that's always going to be covered and well protected but what we want to do is have a consolidated approach for every single environment right you're already saying yesterday we were looking at networks and endpoints today we're looking at cloud data center mobile and then tomorrow uh, we're looking at iot automotive national security and then scada but then i don't think yesterday is yesterday i think yesterday is today then today is today and tomorrow is very very close to today as well right so i believe that we are not too far away from a situation where we have to look at the complete environment and decide what we want to do as an organization so what do we suggest of course like i said we want your money but then uh, you know what we are saying is it's not just about your money have a complete consolidated system which will ensure that any threats known or unknown are blocked before it gets down to your network to your endpoint now like i said that's not going to happen 
right? That is not going to happen. Let us accept it. The fact is, what do you do if something like that happens? Right? That is that's exactly what we are focusing on. And this brings us to our consolidated architecture called Checkpoint Infinity, which we just launched uh, uh, a couple of months ago. What is this? Is this a product? It is not a product, right? What we are trying to say is that it does not matter what you want to protect in your organization, right? Make everything consolidated. Now, imagine the life of a security administrator who has to manage every single thing in his organization from one single management console, right? If I have to manage my cloud, I have one management console to log into. If I have to manage my mobile, I log into one single console. I don't need multiple consoles. So we are trying to make the life of the actual end user really easy without impacting the usability for an end user. That is what we are trying to do here. And at the heart of everything here, at the heart of everything is something we call as a threat cloud. Right? This is really what keeps us running. So what do I mean by the threat cloud? It is actually a cloud that we host, which has about 15 million malware signatures. So every single time there is a zero day attack that we identify, its hash is taken and uploaded in the threat cloud, which means that it is no longer a zero day for any other customer who is connected to the threat cloud. Right? So, and this is the heart of everything we do. And here is an example. Right? <coughs> At 11.30, I get an email with an attachment, a PDF attachment. I block it. By default, Checkpoint believes in scanning these PDFs, removing the macros, removing all the objects that could potentially carry malware. Right? So what we say is we will remove it. If you want it, if you genuinely believe it is safe for you, a bank in fact told me that you cannot remove an Excel attachment, uh, you know, macro, I cannot work on it. He is saying that let us take the first step of prevention and send this to you. If you believe it's genuine, you have the option to retrieve it in a second, right? Now, we are blocking this attachment. And then what we find out is that through our sandboxing, which is not the traditional sandboxing, we have two layers of sandboxing called CPU and OS level sandboxing. We find out that this is a zero day malware. What we do, the first thing we do is go to our threat cloud. We, we update the CNC server information. We update the file hash. At 11.30. At 11.31, this is no longer a zero day for any customer anywhere in the world. Somebody in Russia could open that attachment, nothing will happen. Right? And at 11.32, I decide that my email has been blocked on my laptop. I need to open this mail. I am going in through my mobile device. Because this is a PDF I know. Uh, for me, Checkpoint has no clue what they are doing. They are just blocking something and then telling it's zero day. I know the guy who sent me the mail. We are still going to block it on your mobile device. You cannot do it because we believe it is a harmful PDF file. You should not be able to open it. Now, as an end user, I can go and tell it's not harmful. I know better. Give me the document back. Right? So we will send you the original documents, but not before passing it through the sandboxing process, the multi-level sandboxing process. Once that happens, we tell you, okay, you can keep this file. We found something in the sandbox. So you can keep this file without the macros. Or we tell you, it is malicious. You can do what you want. We are not going to give it to you. Because we believe prevention is much better. Likewise, you could do that on the cloud. You could go on a virtual machine on a cloud, uh, try to connect to this file. It's quarantined. So it does not matter which vector you're trying to access. A zero day in one vector is a zero day in all vectors, according to us. Another example, this is, uh, I will have to run through this. What I would like to say here is, so what I would like to say here is, when we talk of cyber resilience, I think it is also very, very important for you to use your existing systems to its maximum, which means that you have an antivirus, you have a firewall, you have application control, you have URL filtering. All these are good enough for known threats, right? So when there is a threat in your environment, ensure that this threat goes through this funnel. All the known threats are going to be filtered at the very first place when you start doing this. 
the unknown threads is what the bottom part of the funnel should identify right so filter as much as you can let your existing systems be resilient enough to hit back the first time so we don't want we are not going to get zero day attacks every time except in the mobile world right where everything is a zero day all the unknown attacks can go through the bottom part of the funnel where you identify its the zero day but what is also very very important is the fact that you are sending this intelligence back to the top of a funnel right so you need to send this intelligence back to the top of a funnel which means that the next time it's a known and this should be stopped not at your sandbox it should be stopped at your firewall it's very very important to build a resilient system like this of course it's also very important that you have a proper forensic analysis of what has happened and you have a strategy in place to mitigate the damage that could potentially happen <coughs> so to summarize uh, what i'd like to say is don't have point solutions right if you have point solutions don't rip and replace please all we are saying is ensure that you build in enough knowledge into these point solutions to ensure that they can retaliate as much as they can and then the systems below them uh, can then take care of the unknown what this means is build your intelligence properly when you're putting together a cyber security strategy what is what this also means is that it is very very important that you do not think as only my goalkeeper has to defend right it does not has to be the job of a goalkeeper to defend only your defender can also defend let the ball not go to your goalkeeper let your defender defend as well if the defender misses it ensure that the goalkeeper stops it right so so please plan it in such a way and that's what we are trying to do with checkpoint infinity we are trying to stop everything at the top if things don't stop have a remedial plan in place as well so this is where we believe the future is going uh, as an organization we believe that we have moved far away from the traditional networks we are moving towards cloud mobile and threat uh, advanced threats which we believe will have the maximum action this year in terms of attacks uh, what i would say is please talk to us uh, we are more than happy to have conversations with you during the break times uh, but then i just like to reiterate uh, it is very very important to think beyond the traditional firewall uh, world that we are all in uh, i'm not saying we are like that but then i've seen from my experience that that's how a lot of our customers are thinking it's it's time to think beyond network security and beyond firewall and put together a strategy in place which is going to ensure that you don't run the risk of shutting down your business but having a continuity plan when an attack happens right. thank you all so much for your time <coughs> and gentlemen venu would be here till evening so you can ask as many questions as you want yes and um, we'll just take a small break but before that venu can i request you to be back on the stage please and rama may i request you to give a small token of appreciation on behalf of nascom could you just move a little for a proper photo op thank you ma'am Thank you. So as I mentioned, let's just take a small break because we are actually running